First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. No doubt playtime is over, and we are back once again with First World Order Radio. Your host, Dr. Elaine Bay, as well as we getting ready to bring up my co-host, Brother L. You here? Hey, how I tell you, what's your East, boy? Hey, I tell you, what's your East, boy? What's up with you? How you doing tonight? Uh, wonderful, wonderful. Happy New Year to you and the family. Well, happy European New Year. <laughs> <laughs> I was in, I was in March. March was the first. Um, I wonder how you going to respond to that. <laughs> I or not. So you know how I feel about that. So you know what's going on. Um, that's one of them anyway. You know, we was in Africa amongst the Dogon and Mali. Then it would be June 23rd. So. Um, whatever the case is, we're getting it in, and I'm getting ready to go to the phone line. Um, is there code 302? Hopefully this is Sister Abundance Child and the God Brother Inky. Peace, Peace. Sister Abundance. Peace, Peace. 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 Goddess. Right, right. How you doing tonight? Oh, man, I'm happy to be here. I'm real honored. I finally get to be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, uh-huh. right, right. So um, what you got for us tonight, I know we want to get into that magazine, you know, the bar, the breath, air, you know, so um, right. let's get into that and uh, what's the concept behind it, when it came about and, and um, what you expect to do with it and, you know, let's let's tell the people the direction that we're going in. Basically, um, it really was just like a private um, happening with Minister Inky. He um he wanted to do this brochure, you know, things that he could add when um, he sends his products out to people. And then um, then he got, in, you know, he got access to this printer, and he was like, no, nah, I'm going to make this magazine slash newsletter. And it basically was going to be his articles, everybody that he was working with and was close with, and that was it. And then, um, you know, he ended up speaking to his brother, I mean, his cousin Cavario, who uh, was like the senior editor for Hip Hop Weekly, you know, major national hip hop magazine. And the brother was like, nah, man, you know, first of all, magazines don't really make no money off of selling, you know, um, selling like the magazine. Like you, you usually make it off of ads and stuff like that. But really with what you're trying to do, you really should be including everybody 
and he thought about it because um, it was just really supposed to be print, you know, a print publication about a lot of the work that um, he's doing and, like I said, people close to him is doing. And then um, it evolved into a way that he saw that it could unify the so well, I don't want to say so-called because I'm a part of it, but it could unify the conscious community. And um, so that's where I came in. I started um, helping out and getting everybody like you, like the majority of people in the magazine. I actually, you know, personally called up everybody and was like, look, you know, would you like to write uh, a, a monthly article on something that, something that you already do? So that, you know, a lot of times people ask us to do stuff, but it's like over and above and beyond. You know, like we're trying to feed our families. Everybody's taking part in how they're trying to liberate people. Um, so it was something that you've already done. A lot of people already have works. They've already had publications and things like that. And then, you know, advertisement for them as well. So it ended up turning into a publication that the um, it could speak for the people in, in, in a way that right. we control instead of mm-hmm. going on right. FedBook and they control everything, you know. So this right. is also a way where, it, as, as far as print, it could be in the hands of people. It's still nothing like being able to pick up something and read it. And we didn't want it to be like a trash magazine. We want something like you want to hold on to these, like their books. I mean, like you're in the first edition. Dr. Del- Delbert Blair is in the first edition. Phil Valentine's mm. in the first edition. Some people, when we hit the streets, have never heard of y'all. People in the prisons, when they right. get the regular Rebel Rousal magazines, they've never heard of Dr. Eileen Bay. They've never heard of Abundant mm-hmm. Child and, and, and can tap into her um, into her advice column and, and have ads for natural things. And you find um, photographs and our models look like, you know, original aboriginal women. I don't want to see no right. kids with blonde hair and weaves and massively right, right. overweight because they eat the standard American diet. You know, no disrespect to them sisters who are doing that. Come on, but that doesn't necessarily – that doesn't have to be our representation. Exactly. Just because, no, you know, no. we coming up – you know, eating these things don't mean, like, we have to be, like, thick chicks are better. Yeah, thick chicks are better, but we still need to be healthy, you know? <laughs> right, yeah. right. Right. Well, speaking of, speaking of that, of liberation, um, you know, I used to be a writer for – um. Brother Marcus Klein's magazine, Frontline Magazine, for years. Um, so that's how I actually got my um, writing skills up, was actually working with him um, back in the early 2000s, um, on up into the mid of 2000. Um, I was still writing for him, I think, all the way up until like 2006. But um, the thing is, is that, um, um, you know, um, that was one of the, um, definitely one of the quality magazines that we had, as long with Brother um Javon's magazine, you know, or, you know, um, newspaper, which is Ghetto Thomas magazine, um, you know. you talking about Bebe Ashange or who? You said <laughs> right. Ghetto Times? Javon, Bebe Ashange, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. My brother. He's, a, he's right. one of Ghetto the contributors. Thomas. Right. Well, no doubt, no doubt. Um, so, you know, because I, I, I used to write for him, too, in the Ghetto Time magazine. I think um, he so, told me that about a year or two ago. Right. Right, right, right. So I wrote for both of these brothers. And so the thing is, is that, you know, this conscious thing, I know there was hundreds and thousands of people in which that woke up through them. So um, we get definitely going to see greater works, you know, with you, know, with you and Minister Inky, um, awakening um, the brothers and sisters up even more. So um, let's tell the people about, you know, the articles and what they're going to be dealing with as far as consciousness. You touched on it with the um, natural um, products, your natural products. Let's speak about that, your natural products, and also what we can expect to see in this magazine. Um, you can expect to see the truth from our perspective. What we did is we said we wanted to gather up whom we feel are the custodians of the conscious community. These people have followings. These people have impacted people's life. You understand what I'm saying? So that, those are the people that we went after, as well as the people that we don't know. The people who respond on, who are responding to YouTube videos, the people who sat back and critiqued the debates and things like that, we wanted to have their voice in there as well. So that's what you can expect um, to see in that magazine. As far as the articles, they usually the articles are going, are representations of those representatives that we have. So, for example, I have an advice column called Dear Abundance. It's also called Ask Abundance. And like the sister, she asked me, um, she said, listen, I, I, you know, I got involved with this very upright, you know, righteous brother, 
Um, he's a Muslim. He's an Orthodox Muslim. But I've been studying Prophet Noble Ali, and I've been getting a lot of information. And he was saying that the only true Islam is the, is, is Orthodox Islam. So mm. what say you? So my response, well, and she was just like, you know, she wanted to, um, excellent, excellent. you know, he's supposed to be the lead. She kind of went into that and all that type of stuff. And I said, um, you know, since she's asking me, and it is my advice column, I was just like, well, true Islam started with Prophet Muhammad, and he died, and I was so, so that would have to be his line. And so to me, that's what true Islam is as far as, far as I'm concerned. And um, a brother should lead, but we women have to be wise and the brothers that we choose to lead, so choose wisely, mm-hmm. and that right. was it. Like, I didn't want to get into a whole diatribe. I just stuck to the point. True Islam to me was the line of Prophet Muhammad, you know what I mean? That was it. And, you know, choose your man wisely. I, you know, I don't want to be getting people and, you know, problems with their mates and stuff like that. So right. that's an example right. of what you can exactly. expect from me, as well so as just, seeing advertisements yeah, for... Oh, thank you. <laughs> Seeing advertisements for... If you go to you, there'd be 100 points right there. Yeah. Oh, give thanks. Well, well, let me just get another interjection about that as far as my advice column. If there's anything that I cannot answer, I have an abundance network of people that I could go to. So I could, I could call. I don't have no problem saying, Dr. Eileen Bay, the sister asked me such and such. What do you think? And then I will just put that in there. And I let people know, like, I don't know everything, but I do know enough people that know everything. You know what I mean? So so also, for me, since I'm a contributor, my advertisements would be for the Drop Squad Kitchen. You're going to see advertisements for my store in there. You're going to see advertisements for my products. Like, I have seasonings. I have um, condiments because a lot of times, you know, we we go vegan, but we don't have our own ketchup, our own mustard, our own mayonnaise, our own salad dressings, our own seasoning. So, like, that was what I put in this magazine. You're going to see fashion spreads in there, and you're going to see, um, instead of seeing the new Air Jordan, you'll see clothing line for, from Ferrana Cart Brands in there. And the photography is done by one of our own, Rita G. You'll see spreads in there of other sisters that look just like us with natural um, hair designs and representing other mm. different brands. Wonderful. You'll see advertisements in there for Gorilla Republic. We are a major organization that focuses on hip-hop and education of our youth in the urban centers. So you're going to see all of the various different events that we put on in that magazine and, and, and so how to find the So we're going to see a lot of information then. So we're going to see a lot of information then. Sorry for, for cutting you off, but I got no, to no get problem. this point in, Jackie. Point in. Um, concerning God Hop. Yes. Well, that's, um, you know, you know, I'm an ambassador for Gorilla Republic, and yeah. I am the queen mother of God Hop. So, that's of course, right. God Hop is in there. I personally edited and did my sister Cyrock's article. And in this article, you know how a lot of times, what we ask, well, not we, I'll say it because I'm the one who did it. What I asked the artist, Nehruvi Selah, Soul Messiah, Cyrock, yeah. Methuselah, all of the people who are part of the God Hop movement, I said, listen, we could go on SoundCloud, Reverb Nation, YouTube, and hear your music. I want to hear the intellect. This came down from Minnesota. Right. He was just like, tell these brothers and sisters, we want to hear the intellectual side. Intelligence exactly. is the new gangster. Consciousness is the new gangster. Being smart is the new gangster. So what Sarak provided us <laughs> with was what she had to say about Nicki Minaj. That, to no. me, that's amazing. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's what her article yeah. is about. Word. Right. What about the other system which that you also um, are connected with, and which that you play her music um, on your show hey, all the time? And matter of fact, yes. Now, Ruby. And matter of fact, speaking of your show, you know, tell everybody about your show too, and um, and also, yeah, get back to now, Ruby, before we can get um, to her, because um, I'm pretty sure we like to hear some of that consciousness come out of her too. Now, Ruby is a, is a teacher. Now, Ruby is deep. Right. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. she started out with the spoken right. word and all that type of stuff. The thing that I like about Nay Ruby is that we can even more better relate to her lyrics because they're more down-to-earth, you know, uh, rooted in what's happening. Like, she's got a song called Six O'Clock. She's like, you turn on the news and it's six o'clock. Brother's hit in the street. Sister got raped. It's, you know, blah, 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 blah. We can relate to that. Where Sister Sarak... You know, she might be like, um, the mothership is coming, the Nebuchadnezzar. A lot of people don't know what that is. 
You know what I mean? So right. all of us, can, right. you know, in the conscious right. community, but Nay Ruby can reach people because she's talking about, um, she she has, like, clips in there that she was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm all about this lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? I'm about that hair, we even about the fingernails, you know what I'm saying? And it's like gunshots. Like, no, we ain't trying to hear all that in these days and times. Sisters, y'all need to step your game up. So we're going to hear that side of her that deals with how come all the tweak the twerkers, how come all the sisters out here, um, and the brothers out here that are disrespecting their women and their children and stuff like that are not being addressed, but we want to spend all this time debating about stuff that don't help us with our upliftment. That's the type of stuff that she's going to bring. Mm. We mm. also got Nene okay. Ali. Nene Ali is only, like, 14 years old. She's a hip-hop artist. We've seen her with, uh, you know, KRS-One. We've seen her with Guru. We've seen her with everybody. She's also um, she's in the magazine talking about rethink poverty. Like, just because we conscious don't mean we got to be broke. That girl's only like 16 years old writing articles, and that's in the magazine. Mm. And she's guerrilla mm. Excellent, excellent. Oh man, oh man, I can't, I can't wait. Um, matter of fact, when is getting ready to come out? When we need to see the first issue? What's going on with that? Um, well, we we premiered the first issue at the debate in Harlem with Lord Abba Ali, Muhammad, Seti, and Nasi, and we gave everybody mm-hmm. samples. So we put that out there so they could just see a feel and. But uh, January, we're looking forward to come out this okay. month. Um, and oh, right. it, we wanted to do December, but you know this was this is our first project, and um, you know people, you know, God, that's why you know Minister Inky's, you know, with his family right now, so in Atlanta, so you know people are taking care of their family business, so we're getting all of that type of stuff out of order, and the, you know, magazine should be coming out in January. And all um, right, all right. Well, that means I need to get mine, so I'm gonna have to give you. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, my uh, email, my address for me for me get it because I do got an article in there, y'all. Um, it was on yeah. um all we three fifth person. Too. So, yeah. right, right. So all we three fifth was, person. That is one of the articles in there uh, from me. Every time so. we got an article, like when we got your article, Minister Iki was like, "Yo, this might be the featured article." The articles were so dope that every time time we got a new submission, it was like, "Oh my god, this might be the best article." And we get in Baby and Shangi's article on what Christmas is. Oh my God, this might be the best article. You know, then we get Phil <laughs> Valentine's. Oh my God, this might be the best article. Come on, we even got King Noble. Oh my God, like, do you see the diversity in this magazine? That's we even right. got the Hebrew Israelites from um, ISUPKs up in there. Well, there we go. So that means we get ready to bring the family together, and that's what we need. Exactly. You know, we're going to say common unity. And it has to be about unity, but it can't be nothing common. Got to be dealing with common sense, right? But nothing common, you know. Mm-hmm. So, um, definitely, we need to do that. And um, I appreciate y'all definitely putting this together here. Um, speaking of the debate, <laughs> um, you said y'all was there. You was there. Um, what was your, um, what what was your philosophy about what took place? Um, philosophy as far as what aspect? Um, just as far as in the doctrines, the dogma, the rhetoric, or whatever, you know, you might have picked up or, you know, wanted to expound on or whatever the case is. I did think, I do like the debates. I, I do want them to be more organized, and I feel right. as though they should be more solution-oriented. I think we should be debating about Definitely. something, a project that we are working on in the community. So, right. um Let's say, like, I'm doing a show tomorrow, Bunny Child Worldwide, Thursday, you know, Blog Talk Radio with Lord Abba. This is the second time I'm doing the show. I did it a few years ago. Like, to me, we should have different houses of Moors coming together talking about um, do we need a Moorish American party? You know what I mean? And, 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 and why? And if we do decide based off of the debate on who won, why, how are we going to help this brother do it? To me, that's what right. we should be having a debate on. Mm-hmm. Sonetta has asked me to debate on polygamy. Are we for it? Am I, uh, am I for it or am I against it? To me, that's something that we right. can talk about so we can get, you know, our lives together as women. And just like it, it's, it's already been stated, this is what the conscious community today has decided. Mm-hmm. If you're with us, then you're down with us, and this is how we're rolling. Or you're not, you know. So 
as far as I'm concerned, I kind of like it and there's room to grow just like anything else. However, I feel as though if it's not put in the hands of the people, then like what happened to jazz, what happened to hip-hop, what happened to the debate, because we hot. Everybody's looking at us. Everybody's always been looking at us. Mm-hmm. And so this is an opportunity also for us to get our finance up because we put these various houses together. And if we don't take advantage of this momentum right now, it could be lost. And, again, it would be just another capitalist opportunity for us to sell consciousness to the unknowing. So that's my philosophy about the about the whole debate thing. Now I did the post date uh, the post debate analysis on the show, and Sonetta was on there. He helped co-host the show, and he was so humble and listened to everybody's um, suggestions and gave feedback and stuff like that. So that's good. Now as far as the brothers um, debating and things like that, um, Lord Abba to me was out of his league at the time. He was a rookie, even though he came with the heart. He came with good intention. I feel like it was a loss for um, the, Moors, um, the Moors and the Moorish American community alike um, because you had two Moors debating each other. Also, right. there, I didn't see unity. First mm-hmm. of all, I was the only sister I saw up in there with a turban. You know what I mean? I was the only sister I saw that was representing us Moors. That was, that was, mm-hmm. that was upsetting. Then I saw a whole lot of other Moors, and all they wanted to do was fight the brother afterward, talking about Lord Abba. They didn't come to support him. They came to be like, we are the grand body, and you don't have the right to speak on such and such. Mm. I didn't like that. Right, right. Um, oh, wow. Right. Oh, wow. I the didn't like that. Well, where were you at, right? Exactly. <laughs> uh, Lord Abba can yeah. handle, handle his own. Um, the, the, the other thing that I didn't like was, um, and, I, and I said this, I was just like, see, this is an opportunity for us to help each other out. I've already asked certain people in the community that are very well known as far as if I'm going to have to do this debate about polygamy, I'm on the side for polygamy. I've asked some scholars in this community to point me to the direction of books, people, families that are successful, all types of stuff to help me with this. Like, I need the community on my side that's on my side. And um, Lord Abba didn't have that. He didn't have, and, and, and it's a shame because to me this is an opportunity for us to act as delegates to our organization or ambassadors even more to um, our various entities, organizations, and nations. So we should have had all the grand bodies represented there, and they should have been there for one purpose, which was to uphold Prophet Noble Jurali. If anything else, that's it. So what happened is um, Ali Muhammad put out some very, I thought, good points, and they weren't rebutted because the brother was a rookie, talking about Lord Abba, and he wasn't prepared. Period. Right. So that's my take on it. Um, now, this is another thing that I think that people need to um, realize. I'm like, yo, just because you might be right, if you're not mm-hmm. able to prove it in the debate, then you lost that debate. It doesn't mean you lost the, the war, but you lost that particular right. battle. So let's right. stop being emotional. Let's start dealing with the fact that you lost the debate because A, B, C, and D. You did not rebut. You wasn't prepared. Your your presentation was all in wingdings, you know, stuff like that. You lost. It doesn't mean that you're not right, though. Um, right. Now, as far as the other side, um, I feel as though <sighs> Sadi, you know, brought another Ash or Quasi presentation. He brought, right. the, uh, you know, the same stuff that we're used to seeing, and his rebut, his mm-hmm. rebuttal was all using the Bible, which I felt like helped the, the um, help Brother Nasi. Um, right. I thought bro- Brother Nasi was prepared and answered every single question. So, um, mm-hmm. and also I like the fact that I saw that even though there were all, all different houses of Hebrew Israelites there, or should I say Israelites there, it didn't mm-hmm. matter if they were warring two minutes before. They all showed solidarity when it came to Brother Nasi. That's right. Mm. That's right. Could learn a lesson from mm. that. Right. Right. That was my overall mm. view of everything. Well, right. I mean, I mean that that right there was um, basically some of the same things, the analysis which that I heard in the conscious community um, after the debate, and um, of course that's still going to be debated, you know, from um, here until it's pull off of YouTube, you know, or whatever the case may be. So um, mm. we definitely um, want to give a um, shout-out to Lord Apple for, um, you know, coming to the defense of Prophet Noble Dwali and trying to do his thing there. And um, also, you know, to um, Ali for bringing up some um, excellent points in which that needs to be um, talked about, you know, understood, overstood, understood, 
and um, so that we can definitely move on, you know, to um, another level of this um, information here. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I was criticized some 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 years ago because I spoke about the fact of, um, you know, of um, us, you know, turning Noble Drali into um, an idol worship. You know, mm-hmm. and that was some of the things that I felt were some of the problems. Um, you know, because um, coming from me sitting in the audience of Temple, you know, having a nationality card from the Temple, and then me branching out, you know, coming into, you know, other conscious centers and knowledge and, you know, information and being around others who had information and knowledge and reading, you know, hundreds and thousands of books. I mean, it just comes to the same analysis, um, which Prophet Nobuj Ali already told us in that um, our law is within you. You know, exactly. and um, yeah. once you realize that is basically the ultimate thing, um, we'll get beyond the, um, you know, debating point. You know, um, there's nothing in which that we have to debate about that because, um, you know, the difference between life and death is is a is someone who can breathe. And if the person is no longer breathing, you know, and then, you know, they have passed on, then something has been released from their body you know, based on the breath aspect. And um, the fact is that Prophet Noble Jali was one of the first to come with that information as far as, you know, to the black, you know, so-called conscious or Moorish, so-called black community, in which that he sh- told you that, you know, the holy breath, you know, that is what we're supposed to be teaching. You know, as revealers of light is the science of the holy breath mm-hmm. and Allah in man. So those are two components that we need to be teaching. And... And here we are still debating history, you know, then that is going to be um, somewhat of a um, problem, you know, um, just rectifying that matter on history. Because none of us was born at that particular time period, so we all go on speculation, you know. But if we can move behind that, we can start dealing with something like that is definitely more relevant. Than that. That's why I love the magazine title, you know, Ba, you know, uh, you know Breath. And I mean, that is mm-hmm. that is uh, exactly right there. You know, I mean that is what we need to be dealing with. I mean, that's what you know you, you know you know everybody is coming together is, is dealing with is the real science right. of what's really going on. There's nothing higher than the holy breath. You know, the holy breath exactly. is the mother of exactly. You know, so once we begin to start realizing that, then we start dealing with those aspects. You know, from those particular angles and get away from all of this. Right. Right. Uh, you have some. Uh, you wanna, yeah. You have some uh, brothers brother and sisters uh, still want to stick to that that they are black. You know, uh, one uh, some brothers are. Uh, one brother mentioned like uh, black is not always evil or wicked or bad, which is true. But you still can't relate that to people. You know, uh, I was reading in the uh, Northwest uh, Dictionary last night. And uh, I saw black as being an adjective. So people are not adjectives. People are nouns, people are nouns and proper nouns. An adjective so, is a noun, by the way, brother. Just so uh, you know. An adjective is a noun. African? No, I was just reminding you that an adjective is a noun that describes a person, place, or thing. Okay. Okay. I wasn't trying to come. That causes no beat, but, you know, I just wanted to, you know. Remind okay. you that an adjective is a noun. Is a noun? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's an adjective is a noun that describes a person, place, or thing. Okay, well, they had black as an adjective. Mm-hmm, which is a noun. It's a noun. That describes a person, place, or thing. Okay. Yeah. So, but uh, black also, uh, black is also a color, right? Right, which is a noun. A color well, is a noun. Right, but, but people yeah. are not colors. No, or but crayons people are or nouns. Crayolas. A noun is a person, place, or thing. But okay, I know okay. exactly what you're saying. Like, I'm not going to get into that debate with you, okay, but I'm just okay. saying when we, especially when we're teaching, because I have youth, I have my children that I homeschool, I'm like, I have to teach them these mm-hmm. things. So I do teach them grammar since we ha- mm-hmm. do have to have a command of this language if we're going to utilize it in order to express these things. So I've had to find other ways in order to make this point to them. And my daughter will tell you right now, she's like, you know, I don't. I ain't never met nobody that's black. You know what I mean? So I know okay. what you're saying. I just wanted to add that point in, though. Okay, but you, 
but but you don't consider you do you do you uh, do not do you not consider yourself I'm a black? I'm a more. We don't okay, say okay, what you're talking exactly, about. Exactly. Okay. Okay. I just got to do some more studying. That's all. <laughs> no, no, but you're can... you're right. I think it's the delivery sometimes and how we teach people. So I just wanted to have that. So if you get amongst other people that try to shoot you down for that matter, right. you can already be like, yes, I already right. know an adjective is a noun. And but we cannot continue to use that status as it refers to us, especially when we're dealing with 14th Amendment status and when we're dealing with United States, its corporation and all of its um, subsidiaries, you know, or any of its franchises. Right. We have to know how to... Uh, behave in contract, period. Right. And we're not yeah. going to be able to do it with the black status, period. Right, right. I, I, so I, now, I, that's how I speak to people. I, I had a conversation with uh, a Chinese woman. Young, I told I told Aleem about it. And uh, I asked her, uh, when you fill out applications and uh, documents and, and things of that sort, do you, uh, when, they, uh, when they get to the point where it says race or, or whatever, uh, do you put yellow? And then she frowned. She frowned up and she said no, with a loud no. She, I said, well, why not? She said, because people are not colors. You know, she, she said, I know people call us that. She said, I know that people call us that, but that's not who we are. Did she tell you what she wrote? She said she put down Asian. Mm. Proper And that's what we have to do with our children We have mm-hmm. to teach them what to write down Exactly Exactly And uh, uh, she said that uh, I asked her well, what do Asian mean I, no, I already know what it meant But she said uh, earth centered people I said oh okay Sometimes she put down the nationality. She put down either uh, Chinese, which I, I I knew she's not. Actually, she's a Manchurian. Because a lot of Chinese don't know that they are Manchurians. Uh, no, right. they don't know that. Right. The the the, the, the corporation is China. You right. know, the country is Manchuria. Mm-hmm. But a lot of them don't know that. So, yeah, but we had a pretty good, interesting conversation. You know. And uh, so, what do you? I asked her, "What are you saying? People are not color, so you saying I'm not black?" And she <laughs> said, "No, you're not." What did she say? She did. She did. So what did she say? You were. Did you ask her what you? Oh, right, I, I, told, right, I, I, I told her. I, I, I told her I said I'm more. She said more. Then, then she, uh, she got lost. I said I'm a more. I'm an American more. Or I'm Akatan. I'm a rocket. And she said that, that she got she get real confused. <laughs> she said uh, that I I thought I, I broke it all down to her what I was talking about. Right, uh-huh. right. But so you know what? Out, you know what would have been good to ask? What would have been good to ask was what do you refer to us in in your language? Yes, that's what I want. I was hoping she was going to say that. Uh-huh. Right. Of course, that's that's what happened with me when my wife and I went to Mexico. I mm-hmm. asked a native Mexican, you know. Um, who was, you know, he was related, you know, to the Mayans. And I said, well, how do y'all refer to us in America as, you know, us, you know, so-called blacks? And he said, Moreno. Bigger? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, no, no, he didn't say that. He said, Moreno. Okay. Right, he said, what? Moreno. And I said, I love it. Mm. I said, Moreno. And so I asked him, I said, well, why not Negro? He said, Negro is an object. You know, so yes, there's a person, place, and thing, but yet, is describe a thing, an object, but it don't describe a person. So he was like, Moreno is more defiant. And so mm-hmm. I said, hmm, it's Moreno. Now, of course, I already knew, you know, you know, all of the history behind it, but the fact was that I got it from him and his native tongue. You know, so if you see her again, ask her that question. I'm um, definitely going to see that. That would be I'm interesting to find out. That. And right, it might not be nigga, it might be naga. <laughs> right. I'm surprised that lady didn't say, we call y'all the madras or something like that in China, you know what I mean? Because right. we definitely have, um, you know, it's definitely proof. They've even talked about how, you know, we were the original so-called 
uh, you know, I don't want to say, but you know, for lack of a better term, we're the original black Chinese. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Hmm, okay. I'm getting me a little education tonight, I see. <laughs> yeah, you can look up, like, the M-A-D-R-A-S, um, you know, all of that. They call us, the, like, the Madras Indians and, and stuff like that. Hmm, Okay. I didn't know that. And of course, you know, that goes back to Ethiopia. Their own scientists, they've got all types of articles out. You know, I love reading stuff about this. Like, they've got all types of articles out. The Chinese proved that the first inhabitants of China were black. Chinese originated <laughs> from black East Africans, not the Peking men. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, mm. They were Moors, you know what I mean? Moors, and they were referred exactly. to as the black people of the north and um they were the original people of the land, period. And and when and when they talk about it, they talked about they referred to them as Moors and then they broke the 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 universal or umbrella term were Moors, but they had different tribes of Moors and then they had different names to define them as that. So that explains why they have that huge pyramid in China. They, they everywhere we have gone, Giza. right, everywhere we have gone, you can see how we left our mark, and you will see pyramids. Mm-hmm. The only people that don't have pyramids are the so-called Europeans or the Caucasians. Exactly. That's right. They don't have anything, <laughs> you know what I mean? We've got stuff everywhere that we have ever been. We were the first to be drilling oil all tight over here and over there, like everything. Like uh, his, uh, the the uh, the term black European, you know. What the like, heck is that? <laughs> black European. I like you know. <laughs> but uh, I, I kind of got I kind of figured what he what what what, what he was talking about. Right, you know, right. The so called black nobility. Right, the so called black nobility. Right of of um of of Europe. Right. Um. Well, we go back to the black Moors. You know, um, mm-hmm. um, you go back and watch the movie um, with Martin Lawrence in it. You know, um, what's the name of the movie? Black Knight. Um, you oh, know, yeah. he was called more, right? He was called the more throughout the whole movie. Right. Um, <laughs> he was with Martin Lawrence. Mm-hmm. Is your chat open? Yes, it's open. Well, I can't get into the chat. I was going to post some links in there for the brother. Okay. Let me get not links, but not information links. on my blog. I'm, I'm signed in, but I just the chat wasn't coming. It's, every time I come to your show, I can never see the chat for some reason. Remember I told you that before? Oh, here it is. Right. I think it's coming up now. Yeah, yeah I had to refresh my browser. I think because I, I came on like at 7.55, you know? Okay. So the chat probably wasn't open yet. Okay. Right, right. No doubt, no doubt. Playtime is over once again. First Water Radio, we back with your host, Dr. Ali Mel Bay, co-host, Brother R.L. And what we're going to be doing right now, we're going to be going to the phone lines. For those that have questions, call in at 626-414-3535. That is 626-414-3535. Um, let's go to the phone line, right? We got area code 804, area code 804 on the line. Peace. Peace. Hey, what's going on? I I just um wanted to bring this forth. You know, it's a new year, so let me just let let me just let the cat out the bag. This is how I feel. You know the the story in the Bible of Cain and Abel. I think the real right. the real uh breakdown of that, you know what I mean, would be uh Naga versus Moore. You know right. what I mean? I believe that we all are one family, but you do have a family that went through the slave thing. You know what I mean? There's, there's no getting around that. Now, you got brothers and sisters are saying, we moors. All right, that's fine. That's fine, okay? But there's no way that you can get around the slave thing, the the the, 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 the horrific thing that we went through, all right? There's no way of getting around that. Now, we all speak about the ancestors inside of us. You know what I mean? The ancestors, they reside in us, okay? These mm-hmm. same ancestors 
are telling every last one of us. I don't care if you are saying you more, that's fine. You know what I mean? And if, if you are saying, well, you know, the, the, the slave thing is not something that we should, you know, uh, base our root on or, or stand firm on. Right. You know what I mean? But this is what our ancestors, every last one of us, you know what I mean? If we dealing with our ancestors for real and we dealing with our Orishas, we we know that they are telling us, you know what I mean, this hurt us. And we got a problem with that. You understand what I'm saying? And it and it's, it's, it's brothers and sisters out here that didn't go through what a lot of us went through. Okay? But this is where the separation is. You know what I mean? You got family that didn't go, didn't come here on a slave ship, and you got family that did come here on a slave ship. Okay? Where is our medium? When are we going to stop saying, oh, that's, that's, leave that alone, when it's affecting one side of our family the way it is? You know what I mean? Brother Arlene, I feel you. You know, you say you're, you're more. I feel you on that. You know what I mean? But at the same time, I know, brother, that you feel the ancestors in you. You know what we've been through. And it's in your heart. You know what I mean? And I'm not even going to say you're a brother that's, that's straddling the fence. I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling the, the need to speak this through you. Like, I, I could go on anybody's show and, and speak my feelings, but through you, Right. I feel like that you understand where I'm coming from when I'm saying what I'm saying. Where is our medium? When are we going to start respecting the fact that one of us, one side of our family did go through it and one side didn't? And right. when it go, when it's rooted back to the motherland, that same side put us in it. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I do believe that. I do believe that the Hamite and the Kemite are two different tribes, but on on a, but one is more on a higher level than the other. You got just that mm-hmm. whole. I believe the whole now the whole now region, not just the Eastern. not just the now river, not just the the, the now valley. The entire now was right. of us, was of that was of that comedic family. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Right. So. When are we going to start dealing with that and stop, you know, making it like, well, it didn't happen this way. And the other ones said, well, we know it did. The evidence evidence is there. How can you, you know, this is what the beef has been. Right. So, you know, we well, need to let's, deal let's, with that. Let's, let's get, let's, let's get I want to respond to because, Right, right, because we know there was a Holocaust or an African right, right. Holocaust. There's no right, doubt right. about that. There was a great Mayafa. There's no doubt about that. All right? What some of the Moors are referring to is that the Middle Passage, as far as the, to the extent in which that European had led us to believe, did not happen the way that it happened. Now, right. we ain't saying there was no colonization. We're not saying that there was no enslavement on the African continent and then taking those Africans from out of Africa and spreading them throughout the diaspora, throughout Europe, you know, in particular throughout England, Ireland, um, Belgium, which is the Netherlands. France, you know, all of those countries participated in slavery. And then for those prisoners who was let out of England, all right, because that's who was let out, was, was those prisoners. They was, they was the worst of criminals there within England who was let out to come here to the Americas. They took that over, and they also participated in the so-called slave trade. Now, I'm going to tell you what historian, what Dr. Um, John Henry Clark said. He stated that there was approximately 250 million that was decimated, all right? But it, it was just not in Africa or in the transatlantic slave trade, but here in the Americas. You're forgetting that 90 million of us was genocide. Blankets with smallpox on it right here. You know what I'm saying? Right, but right. We ain't talking about, you know, the... We're not. We're talking about, and we're not talking about just you know uh, over ten thousand, you know, um, to a hundred thousand lynchings in which that occurred, right. and the castrations right. in which that occurred. All of this took place over a five hundred year period. But remember, that's right. If, if you go and read Johnny Cochran's book, he estimated that twenty five million so called blacks died during the slavery in the United States. Now, we That's know right. that slavery was supposed to have been abolished January the 31st, 1865, mm-hmm. but guess what? 
Slavery <laughs> never ended. It never disappeared. That's, yeah, that's I mean, on. emancipation, brother. You got emancipation. Right, emancipation doesn't mean freedom. Emancipation means the removal of physical shackles. That's all that means. Right. You know right. what I mean? But so we, we know what that means. But at, at, at the same time, right. at the same I don't mean to interrupt. Excuse me, brother. At the same time, you know what I mean? It's 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 not <laughs> it's not something that we can just we can just ignore, but at the same time, uh, deal with somebody saying, "Well, you know, don't don't you know don't don't if that's this is where your history starts and this is where it ends, all of that." Like we understand that that's not where our history started, but at the same time, like you know, where does a where does it come from? Where a brother or sister could say something like that, and you know, just like totally just like wipe that to the side. You know what I'm saying? This is where the beef comes in at. This is where the problems come. This is where the confusion comes in at. Great, but you see, you was asking about a, about a connection point. Let me let me tell you the connect point. You go to the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People, in particular right. the Inter-American Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People. Let me read the definition of Indigenous peoples to you, and this is where we Dang. all connect that, regardless of we want to um, say it happened and then it happened. Because once again, I said that in the beginning, that we be based on information all day long, but real analysis is based on that bar. That breath, the air in which that that's right. the magazine they're talking about, but even more important than just a magazine is talking about what is that that is what resonates throughout you. But here's the definition indigenous people. In this declaration, indigenous people are those who embody historical continuity with societies which existed prior to the conquest and the settlement of their territories by Europeans, as well as people brought involuntarily to the New World who free yep. themselves and reestablish the culture for which they have been torn. Now, in both definitely those who were the eleven, those who did not have slavery in history, as well as those of the 15%, you know what I'm saying, of the slaves in which that came here into the Americas, then we're talking about the emerging of both is within that definition of being indigenous. Regardless, we are still the oldest people on the face of the planet. Oh, absolutely. 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 I wanted to Uh, add to Brother Aline that I think that it's also a spiritual thing because when you talk Mm -hmm. about we, we're talking about everybody, you know, like we are the medium. We are the medium. Our ancestors aren't something outside of us. Mm -hmm. So it's not about, I know you can feel, the people who can't feel and can make blanket statements like that are people who don't recognize that they are their ancestor. It is proof that we are here through our DNA. It is a fact that we are our ancestors. The same goes for the Arisha and the angels. I That's am right. an Obatala priestess. I made Obatala in 2003. So when I came into my understanding, I realized that Obatala is not an existence outside of me. When people say Obatala right. in their head and stuff like that, I am Obatala. My mother is Oya. I was brought to my That's mother right. via um, Oshun. All of that is within me. The people who can't tap into that and want to put it off as this is Vodun, this is Yorba, this is Ifa, this is all of that, they don't get it. So therefore they can't tap into the very same spirits. And and we are the same people that sold us into slavery. We are the same people today. So those same people talking shit then are the same people talking shit (laughs) now. The same people who were Moors then are the same people who are Moors now. And the, um, the final statement that I had wanted to make was that um, I think I lost my train of thought because the brother was going in. He was saying so much. <laughs> but there was something else I had wanted to add in, and I lost my thought. So never mind. Oh, <laughs> all right. Let's, 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 oh, let's, okay. let's get back so, to another story. Like, for example, the 13th Amendment, which supposedly abolished slavery in the United States, but it, it states specifically neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as a punishment for crime. Right, for and crime. And we got Prison. percent Right, 65% of the prisoners are so-called black, Moors, Asian, whatever term you want to use, is our people mm-hmm. in it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so we're talking about 65% of the damn prison system is being ran off the blood, sweat, and tears of our present-day ancestors who right. is in the damn halls of damn the penitentiary. Exactly. Um, mm-hmm. So slavery has never ended. We're still dealing no. with 
Exactly. That was my whole point on um, uh, emancipation. Right, or whether it's uh, whether it's mental slavery, they still exist. And remember, what the sister was talking about too is that you talking about a segment of people who are calling themselves Moors who probably just came into this information and never really did the real study or research on it, in which that if they did, they would become more holistic in their thinking. Right now, they fragmented and they're linear. They more use they are utilizing their left hemisphere of their brain, which is only about two to ten percent. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> We're, in order to become holistic, you must begin to start using more aspects of your brain. You must begin mm-hmm. to start looking at it from a holistic point of view. You can't keep looking at it from a fragmented point of view. Like the brother said, Hello. it happened. So how does it fit into the scenario with everything in which that is now being um, or now is coming out? Simple, brother. Only thing we're saying is that Africans have been here for over 10,000 years, which is shown by proof of a group of people known as the Omex. Prior to them, you had right. a you have a group of black folks, as they say, of the fossil. Who was here seventy five years? Oh, the old uh, carbon Before date. Them, is it, didn't they carbon date that? Yeah. And even yeah, they, all right, so that they means that, that, honestly, that means that they don't know how long that shit been there. Excuse my French. They don't know how long that been there, bro. They don't. But they give you the estimate of about five, well, you know, five thousand. Yeah, at least ten thousand years old. The point is, we are carbon people. But the point, that's what's crazy. But the point is, we're carbon people. Exactly. Right, and the point, but the point is, is that if I keep going back, I can show you in a book called Forbidden Archaeology by Michael Cremore, whose date that we were already here two point. Eight billion years ago on planet Earth, and six hundred million years ago right here in the Western Hemisphere. So right. if I keep yeah. going back, only thing if I keep going back, only thing I keep finding is me. So it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you like this, God. If wherever there's a pyramid, all right, we civilized. Right, right. right. That's right. Exactly. That's why when anybody calls themselves trying to trace our history, they can't. They cannot right. trace our history. They can't. They can't. Yeah. They can't. I, well, I could go into a million things, but I ain't even going to tie it up like that. Peace and love, y'all. Peace and love. Keep boy. banging. You know what I mean? All right. Keep banging. Appreciate you. No doubt. We will. Peace. Appreciate that, brother. We're going to go to back to the phone line. Area code 614. Area code 614. You're on the line. Hey. hey. How you doing, Arlene Bay? Hey. And Peace, God. And abundance. And hey. How you doing? Hi, Vandria from Ohio. Um, good, good work on that uh, magazine. I'm just thinking, like, it's a good thing, but what about like the post conference wrap up or feedback? We gotta wait till the magazine to get you guys' point of view. I just think that's the that's the you know conundrum when it comes to a paper magazine when you have YouTube and you have all these other things where you can get instant access to information or, you know, people. The magazine to- did cover it. We covered it on Abundant Child Worldwide. So we're online and offline. And it's oh, covered cool, on cool. YouTube. Yeah, so we covered it. Like, do you know, like, I, I, I had Sonetta was the um, co-host. I was on there. We yeah, had Lord I, I Abba, was not we had online. Ali. We had everybody on there. I was online. I, I, I listened to it. I, I called in. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, but, so, yeah, that, so, so that's what I'm saying. So, okay. Mm-hmm. So you have the paper one. I mean, I, I, I just don't understand the paperback version of the. Of, okay. Of, you know. Well, it's one is because we don't own Blog Talk Radio. We don't oh, own yeah. Facebook. We don't own YouTube. We don't own YouTube. This is something that we have the opportunity to own. Not only do we have the opportunity to own, we have the opportunity to give people jobs. When people come out, one of our best, when you just, he just talked about 60-something percent of us are locked up, that's our workforce right there. You know, so they can come out. They don't need to go work for the corporation or anything like that and be able to try. We don't need to be trying to solve problems with um, any entities that still propagate the ideas of the people who oppress us. So people come out. You have your automatic marketing distribution. You have your automatic um, salespeople, all of that. Also, it's a way for people to get the information. Everybody's not on the social networks, and we realize that. The people who are like my parents' generation, 60 and 70 years old, my parents still get a newspaper. They, okay. It was so interesting to see my mother and my father and my aunties and my uncles' lies, I mean, eyes um, right up 
and read these articles in the magazine and was for real about it. They were not getting this information from blog talk and Facebook and stuff like that. So it's just okay. a piece that we're missing, and um, we don't control any percent of the media. We do now with this print and with some other entities out there that, um, you know, own their own radio and, and stuff like that. So we, we just felt like we could start somewhere, and this is one of the easiest ways to start. Okay, thank you for clearing that up for me. That's that's excellent, excellent. Well, oh, you're welcome. And um, brother Liam, I know you're coming to Ohio, yay! All right, all right, right? no doubt. We're gonna be there. Yep, we're gonna be there in February. Twenty uh-huh. third. So can you bring some yellow dot wormwood and your chakra sauce? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I will bring okay, you the whole. No doubt. <laughs> okay, because I'm looking for those things. All right, I'm going to bring it. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, you guys, keep keep up the excellence. All right, yeah. peace. Thank you. Thank you. Peace. 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 All right, we got area code 510. Area code 510, you on the air. Yes, did you say that the Dogon's uh, New Year was uh, June 23rd? Well, around that time, around the um, um so-called, you know, summer solstice um, area, yeah. Okay, so would I basically celebrate it from the 23rd to the 25th? or t- I mean, can you give me, like, a time? Oh, the 20, the tw- well, the 21st to the 23rd. Um, the 21st to the 23rd. Okay, thanks a lot, man. Peace. All right, now. Huh? All right. All right, we got area code 561. Area code 561, you're on the, li- on the line. Peace, peace, brothers peace. and sisters. This is our uh, live. Peace, God. Yeah, peace, peace, peace. Hey, uh, big shout out to um, Dr. Lean Bay. You know, um, this is from all the way in um, Palm Beach. Ryan all right. Hotel. Okay. Um, yeah, we uh we talked about this on Facebook before about the uh, the physicists that's talking about that the universe is nothing but a big projection. Remember that? Right. Um, chat so i just want you to go in you know the um the panel to go in on that about the the big projection that um has been projected to us you know the hologram you know these guys they're talking about this on the uh the uh the huffpost.com they're talking right. about that the universe is nothing but a hologram right so, uh you know you guys have been talking about this, you know, for many, many, many years, all the way back to um, the, uh, the 80s, you know. Right. So um, a lot of people, they just want to kick in as soon as, you know, they see like this um, Internet post on there with the, uh, the white man saying, oh, yeah, now they verifying that this thing is a hologram. So I just wanted to just put that out there so that you guys can go in on there, the gods and the um the goddesses. All right. Well, um if you go and get the book by Michael Talbert called Holographic Universe, um, he was one of the ones to first put that information out. You can actually look at some of his um YouTube clips, um, in which he breaks down that information about it being a hologram that there was a so-called one atom, a so-called atom in which that, what is called the Big Bang, which is this illusionary universe in which that we are in. But what actually what it is is that we are actually living in a multi, a multi um, universe, um, and it's going to the fact that there are many universes, are what is called multiverses. So this is mm-hmm. not the only one. You know, there's parallel universes, as we were saying. Um, so, um, they all being projections, as we would say, from the mind. It's the mental. It's, go back to Tahuti first principle, universal principle, it's called mentalism. So all is mind, and everything in the universe is mental. Well, that's all it is. It's dealing with mental energy. Right. Well, and so, energy is what is the, is what is producing. Uh, what we refer to as ideas, thoughts, images, 
images, visualization, so on, even consciousness, you know. Mm-hmm. They were trying to yeah, say pretty- that um, because gravity comes from the inside, that we have different vibrating things that exist in the nine different dimensions of space and um, in a whole different other time where real life is supposed to exist in a universe without gravity. So what he's saying is like on that other dimension would be the, the dimension of the mental, and then we have the dimension of how um, everything manifests in the physical. And so that's why they're trying to say that it's coded into a two-dimensional surface. So um, they – that's how, like, actual science works. That's how we work. And so they were saying that the universe is built in a similar uh, fashion. But really because we are carbon original beings that um, that actually operate the universe with our consciousness and our genius and our brilliance and how we define that, the universe expands and contracts based on how we are. You, you mm-hmm. understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes. So yes. they can only break it down into a hologram. However, this is really real. It's just that we're not tapped into that. Okay. Okay. Something like a, the Matrix, how how he was tapped in, but they were trying to say that he was actually living a lot, but he was actually tapped yeah. in. You know, the sister well, had, you, uh, you know, the sister that actually created the whole. It's the like whole a black hole. Like a, if yeah. you examine like the energy of the black hole and you can look at the position of its event on the horizon and its entropy, that's how you can, tell, you can, you can understand the internal energy that we, we possess and how we come from dark matter and how it corresponds to the uh, lower dimensions, as above, so below. Same thing as, mm. as far as our minds and our thought dimensions and how we manifest on the physical. The universe does the same thing. So as we operate on a higher dimension, the universe expands. When we don't and we just operate on the lower frequency, this frequency that the Europeans have created because they have nothing, they don't have what we have, and we mimic everything that we do, it contracts. Mm. Yes. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Y'all didn't know. Now, uh, uh, deep, peace, huh? peace. Y'all just play it. Peace, <laughs> that's what right. 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 it is. What One more say? question for the That's deep, goddess. That's deep. <laughs> one more, uh, one more hit for the panel. If she's going in and night, she's going in. Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and this is going to be in the next um, magazine, y'all. Holographic Universe by Abundance Child. So get it right. Man. Oh yeah. I'm yeah. just gonna copy what I said on tonight. I'm gonna go listen to the show and copy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't be yeah, know what I be saying you, sometimes, you're y'all. In, you're going in. Hey, but it so, made sense um, and it fit right into everything in which I be talking about, and that's the spirit. That's the whole science. We can mm-hmm. download information mm-hmm. from the cosmos because that's the Akashic records. We got that. You know, yeah. it's ours. So, wow, wow. So, um, one more question for y'all. Okay, uh, how y'all feel about? The um the actual uh Khazarans or the Jews versus the uh, the Jesuits, you know. I, I, I'm not trying to get into the conspiracy theory form, but could you agree that the Jesuits and the uh, the Khazarans are the same people? Well, yeah. this is what we can agree on is that the Jesuits is a side. Of you the word Jesuits means to Society of Jesus, which is right. the right. Catholic right. Society of Jesus, right? But they are the assassin branch of the Vatican, you know, right. which that actually um, is controlled or is over by the so-called Black Pope, you know, um, and the new one that sits in the position now. I can't remember his name right now, um, but he sits in position, you know, and so the Jesuits, as far as they're the ones in which that control, you know, the banking and also the so-called intelligence um, programs, such as the CIA and different other um, um, M, what, um, M16 and, um, no, the yeah. M, what, uh-huh. MB, right, they control these so-called secret societies. And they was able to put themselves through Freemasonry is by, you know, a person by the name of Adam Weiser, who was right. also a Jesuit priest of, um, the Ingolstadt uh, um, University. He was a um, professor there, and he came to the Americas allegedly based on a book um, called um, uh, "It's Called Cosmic Triggers," 
by Robert Wilson, by um um Robert Anton Wilson, in which that he stated that Adam Weissup actually was George Washington, and that George Washington, exactly. the real George Washington, was killed off, and Adam Weissup took his position and was the grand master, you know what I'm saying, of the lodge here, you know what I'm saying, in the Americas, as well as also ended up holding not just the position of general, you know, um, or command general, or, inco- you know, or commander, you know what I'm saying, of the army, but it also became president of the United States. So, you know, mm-hmm. if that is the case, then we're looking at the co-op, you know what I'm saying, or the coup of the Jesuit priesthood, you know, um, through Freemasonry. Now, are the Freemasons, the Khazars, the Khazars who we know as the so-called Jews, or a group, you know what I'm saying, in which that is connected to oh. the Jesuits based on the fact that the Rothschilds, all right, listen, that the Rothschilds are Khazarians, they were converts, and they are the ones who was the financiers of the Vatican. They are mm-hmm. the ones in which that um, controlled the money of the London Bank. Also, they financed the Rockefellers here um, in the Americas. Yeah. Peter Rose in um, exactly. Africa ended up killing 25 million Africans. You know, exactly. they financed that. And the Rothschilds are worth almost $900 trillion. So when we're talking wow. about Oprah, when we're talking about, um, when we're talking about, you know, Oprah, or we're talking about, um, um, Warren Buffett, or you know, or any of these people, this, that ain't shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're talking about nine hundred billion dollars, and none of that's right. even real, Doctor Arlene. None of that. We right. we give it. Right. We we allow it to seem real. Like what is that? Right. Well, that that's not that much money. Hell, that's hell. Really, that's the illusion. <laughs> right. That's not because it's, right. it's not that much money on a planet. So, right. you know, that's got to be an illusion. The, uh, so basically, you know, just uh, like in real easy terms, so you understand, the so-called modern-day Jews, like all the modern-day Jews are really the Khazars, and therefore they're not Jewish, all right? Not in blood, not in DNA, not in pedigree, not European. in their descent. They're not entitled to the birthright claims of their land, because we know that that is our land, you know, period. Exactly. And that the Vatican, the Jesuits, the Knights of Malta, all those people who dominate and, and everything that he's talking about right now, are are all in, in cooperation with everybody, and they're so, so called, and they purport to be the dominant rulers of the world. So you got the corporation, and then you got the people. You got the company, and then you got the people. Exactly. Right. Like, I, like I explained right. earlier, you got the world. Like China is the corporation, and Manchuria is the com- as is the country. As mm-hmm. I explained earlier, you know. You got the grand sheik back there. It was the Jewish Rothschilds and the Illuminati that was set up by the Jews, and then the Marino Jews who took over the papacy. Then you got, like he said, Weisop turned against the Jesuits and started working with the Rothschilds. And then it could keep going on and on and on. Exactly. So so basically they're all European. Right. Yes. Right. They right. come from, they actually are, are part Mongolian Nazi. slash Nazi. Um, Russian. They're, they're actually a Russians, you know what I'm saying, who converted into Judaism yep. after the birth hey. of Jerusalem in 70 AD. And um, um, the further, um, if you get the book called 13th Tribe by um, Arthur Kessler, um, Kessler, he states in there that the Khazars um, didn't further convert, that more of them converted around 740 AD, you know what I'm saying. Um, so that is where they come from. We know that the Falashians or the so-called black Hebrews, you know what I'm saying, or the African um, Israelites, you know what I'm saying, or the original, you know, followers of Tahuti or Jehuti. Exactly. Where the word exactly. Jew come from, the word Jew come from Jehuti, you know, who is Hudi, you know, who was, you know, who's the God of wisdom, you know. Wow. And that's what, you know, that comes from out of ancient um, Africa, you know, from Africa, you know, which is now the mouthpiece of Africa is Egypt, you know, so... That's what we. That's what they're really talking about. This is why they had to draft themselves on into a story that they came from out of um, Egypt, you know. So, you know, that's 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 the whole thing about them is that they they take stories and they make it real in order to fulfill purpose, you know. Um, so, mm-hmm. 
But yet, no. he never points back to them in any historical fashion whatsoever. Now, um, here's my last, uh, my last and final um, thing is I want y'all to go in, please. This is our uh, teaching in a hotel. You know, if you're gonna go in with this Draco, this blood sacrifice. You know, because I hear a lot of preachers and um, folks of the religion sect, they always say, let me cover you under the blood of Jesus. Let me cover you under the blood of Jesus, you know. you know. So this blood, to me, that's like that the God that you're serving is blood sacrifice. He desires blood to deliver whatever you're asking him for. Right. Well, you got to look at it like this: is that that whole concept comes from Africa in its origin. The whole thing of the Old Testament and the blood sacrifices, animal sacrifices, that is African. You know, throughout uh-huh. um, any of the African religions, whether it's the Ikan, on the Han, the Ifa, um, the Yoruba, um, Congo, right, uh-huh. which is dealing with the Mekongo and the other Palos, um, all of that deals with animal sacrifice. So. It is an African custom in which and tradition in which that found the way within the scriptures because you was dealing with the African people. And um in order to unionize it, I'm saying, um, the European make it as if they're not the um um the cannibals that they are, you know, in regard of the consumption of life in which they um, you know, do this at. You know what I'm saying? But when you look at, you know, Africa and you look at these traditions they understood what they was doing with these sacrifices in the stat blood symbolized life. Mm-hmm. You know, right. And I'm not justifying right. Fair mm-hmm. I'm not justifying right. you know, that but because life is abundant all around because actually you're dealing with Prana, which happens to be the color red. And Prana being the color red when it's concentrated is the color of blood. It's blood, actually. So, you know, um what they was doing was that in order to um, have concentration of power, it would use these animal sacrifices. Is it necessary to sacrifice animals? No. If you learn science of breathing, which is that bar, that breath, and that air, that magazine, you know, that you talk about that thing, it's that bar, you wouldn't have to depend upon the animal sacrifice, but you would be able to um, revitalize yourself without any animal sacrifice. And it goes to the New Testament. I mean, think about it. Um, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to be a human sacrifice, you know, for people who mainly don't accept, <laughs> you know, um, that that is a, a preposterous so right there within itself, you know. Um, in the Old Testament, we see God almost given a human sacrifice with Isaac, um, and the Muslim say it was Ishmael, actually, but... The Hebrews, the Hebrews don't say that is Isaac. Isaac was on the altar, and Abraham almost sacrificed his son. You know, um, instead God stopped him and gave him a lamb who got his whole court in the bush, you know, and told him to put the ram on the altar and sacrifice it instead. All right, so that was almost the sacrifice for Abraham in which that symbolized the word Abraham itself for the many nations. All right, or the fall of the many seeds. All right, mm. Abraham mm. symbolizes actually the sperm within males, within the males, all right, within the testicles. That's what it actually symbolizes the life component within you. All right, you take the Abraham as being something in which that is actually that actually lives, and that's not the story is actually based on. It's a metaphor, it's an allegory. All right, but we get caught up into these allegories and make them real because we want to justify our belief system. Okay, right. But if we look at it from an esoteric, or if we look at it from an esoteric point of view, it begins to make it more sense because God, given by the New Testament, God given His only begotten Son, and He may die for us, and then we have to go and do a cannibalistic ritual every um, month, in, you know, um, in church. You know, called communion, and then we have to take um, a cracker, you know, which is symbolic to the worship of Jesus, 
and then wine, or in this case, grape juice, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> to be the blood of Jesus. You know, um, this, this is something to which that doesn't make any damn sense. You know what I'm saying? Unless you take this to an esoteric principle and perspective and understand that it's talking about Jesus is actually Yahshua, which the word Yahshua, which is Aramaic, or he who saves, but then the word Yahshua takes you back to the first begotten of Atum in the commanded scriptures, which Shu means the personification of air. If you get the Kabbalistic mm. book called 777 mm. of Alice Crawley, in his book, 888 is Jesus Christ. When you look on the periodical mm-hmm. chart, periodical, um, the eighth element on the periodical chart is oxygen. Mm. Oxygen has eight protons, eight trons, eight electrons. So Jesus Christ symbolizes energy in which that is the force in which that is hidden in oxygen, mm. which is the breath of life. All right, which is the breath of life. So the breath, which is sympathetical and centrifugal force, which is insulation and exhalation, is what holds and composes your physical body. All right? Mm. So that's why in the European tradition you have the deity called Ishu in Legba. Ishu Legba. Or Ishu. Ishu symbolizes the other four of the throne, which is actually talking about your, your body, which is the cross itself. Two legs, and two arms, and the head. What's in the five percent is um head, which becomes Allah or Obata. Mm. It symbolizes Obata in the head That's of the Obata. body, which is talking about your mind, it's Ori, which is the mind or the brain, the head, which mm. rules the physical body. That's He's all telling. this is taught about symbolism. Mm. The symbolism. But we have been able to perform rituals and ceremonies and without the explanation of what these things really mean. And this is our downfall as a people, and this is why we have a lot of things. This is why Stevie wanted to sing the song Superstition. Here we are believing in things in which that are superstition. We got a lot of superstitions in which that we need to um, rectify in this community. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, science, uh, uh, now the, uh, the gold win on uh, Kabbalah's um, encyclopedia talks about the um, Jesus... Number it happens to be six six six. You know, did you teach about this all the time? And about six 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 and six 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 is nothing more than talking right. about carbon. Yeah, you talking about the carbon. Right, right. right. Talking about the carbon. Right. The carbon. We are right. carbon original. Right, that we are carbon original beings. We are carbon beings. The European is carbon right. based beings, but we are carbon units. We are carbon beings. Hmm. Right, so. 666 symbolizes the physical body itself. Yashu, right. Jesus, is the physical body. This is, dude, That was symbolic to the word made flesh in the book of John. The word made exactly. flesh is talking about the way in which that the body is the flesh. The word comes from out the lungs. You know, the lungs deal with, mm-hmm. breath, with breath. It deals with insulation and exhalation. Mm. That's the only way you can speak a word is by projecting a force from your lungs in which that gives you the ability in order to Speak, which is part of the um the um breath apparatus, you know, mm. part of the um lungs, and part of the respiratory system, right? Go ahead, so when you sneeze, mm. when you sneeze, what's the sound you make when you sneeze? If you sneeze, you say yeah, shoot. <laughs> now, how in the hell are you saying no? None of you Negroes <laughs> went to none of y'all went none of y'all went had, as children or babies had damn sneezing classes. Nobody taught you how to sneeze. But yet, we all say the damn same sound. Hmm. Right, the same and the sound. sound. The word that may flesh or the sound that may flesh is Yashu. Yashu is Yashua. Jesus, God damn it. <laughs> you went in, um, Dr. Lee. Come on, Ali. You went in back in the 90s about this. You went in back in the 90s about um, the different sounds, you know, the different sounds of healing, you know, the different, you, you know, the vowels, you know, there's different vibration levels and everything else. And I recorded that over and over. Listen to it. You are a master teacher by right. You know what I mean? So you go in on this shit, you know, and I'm talking about deep. You know what I mean? But uh, 
Go ahead and take your next callers. You know, I appreciate the panel, you know, um, the Sheik, the Grand Sheik, and um, Abundance Child, Minister Inky. You know, we, we definitely appreciate y'all being out here, pounding the ground. Appreciate you, brother. Study. Yeah, appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. <coughs> Peace. Thank you. Peace. 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 All right, we'll go to area code 614, area code 614, you're on the air. Oh, this is Andrea again. So you said the New Year's for the Dogon is in June, July? Right. Right, June 23rd. So what's up with you um? Get, you can get a book um, called um, um, The Serious Mystery, written by... Um, I can't remember his name right now. Serious Mystery. He did that book. And also, The Serious Connection by uh, Murray. Humphrey Murray. And you get those two books in which that, that speaks about um, during that time period. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what's going on with the spring equinox then? What is that? The spring equinox um, basically is for, you know, for us. Uh, for those in which that live within the region in which that jumps was to change the season during that time period. Everybody don't have the same seasonal change or time. I mean, oh, Africa, okay. um, right. You know, in Africa, you know, they near the equator. So um, it's hot all the damn time there. So real, real seasonal change because it is um, raining year round. So they don't, you know, that's only in a place here within America where uh, we start seeing around March First, that we start seeing the um, tree come back to life and so forth. And so forth. So exactly. That is pertinent yeah. to us. Right. It's pertinent to us here, but it's not to the people around the world necessarily, especially the ones in Africa. Okay. All right, cool. And um, this is a quiz. What are you bringing to Ohio? Um, I'm Wormwood. bringing birds. Yes, Wormwood. Yellow dog, Wormwood. I got you. And your I got you. All right, thank you. <laughs> okay. Peace. All right, peace. <laughs> All right, we're going to eight eight zero three eight zero three. You on the air? You say blessing, my brother. Peace, peace God. Peace. Greetings. 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 Hey, peace. Hey, greetings to you all. Peace. Yes, I was. Yes, man. I just wanted to send my peace and love out. You know what I mean? Also, let you know also, my brother, Lean, man, I appreciate the work, and we definitely thank you, man, for all you do, my brother. You know? Well, you appreciate you all for this. listening. A- absolutely, well, my yeah, brother. Must continue, you, on this, must continue on the journey, you know? Uh, I'm calling out of no Carolina. <laughs> yeah, my name right. is Green Miles L. Bay, you know? And um, no I just want to touch on, as- absolutely, I just wanted to touch on a uh, few things that you spoke about, my brother. Which is much love and peace. Mm-hmm. And really, I want to say I can see my brother just to add on in some in some respect. Um, you know, within the conscious community, we have a lot of individuals that is showing the differentiation between these ways of life. And we know and understand mm-hmm. that these ways of life all comes from the original man. Whether we're saying the being Israel's, uh, whether we're saying um, the Asiatic black man. We are all solidifying exactly. that, you know, we are the That's atom, right. you know. That's what right. the differentiation is we coming in between the, 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 the people is everyone wanting to be selective and not deal with the right. initiative. And the initiative mm-hmm. is that we must come together as a community to bring forth some unity, <laughs> you know. Right. From the aspects of these different teachers when it comes to the, to, to, to the ways of these different scriptures or these biblicals or these chronicles, each of these particular teachings right. are clearly specifying the being. <laughs> and, and, and the first people, which are the original people, <laughs> and that's the so-called african American. So I, I like my right. brother in love when you speak upon Yahshua, so-called a.k.a. Jesus Christ, in the way in which these teachings are being solidified. Because we know when we go back to the original teaching of these scripts, it goes back to our brother Saul and the teaching of, of Set and Haru. 
which only show the compilations of a, of a teaching is coming down through a dynasty. So I, I, I just I just wanted to somewhat add on my brother and, and allow you all to know that there are brothers and sisters out here who are not looking for the light. They are true and living. <laughs> and, 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 and we admire you, my brother, and peace to you all. Peace, God. Peace to you. That's my that's my respect. No <laughs> way. Let's go to the phone area code 773, area code 773, you on the air. How y'all doing? What's going well, on, man? Hey. Doing well. Peace, peace, brother. Got a uh, quick question. Uh, it's kind of um, you just you just got through going in and about the breath, and my daughters they right. they watching a movie called uh, The Last Airbender. Have you ever seen mm. that movie? Mm. 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 Good no. movie. Okay. Well, in this movie, it's about this little boy. He's the last Airbender, and he has these ancient tattoos right. on his head. Basically, it's a it's an arrow pointing directly straight to the penal gland. And in the movie, right. the, uh, the story is about the uh, is about the Fire Nation. The Fire Nation want to keep the spirit down, and the Water Nation wants to, you know, like bring the the spirit up. So I guess I guess the uh, the, the last Airbender, I guess he's supposed to be in like the the soul, right? Right. Exactly. Because remember, Earth, Air, Water, and Fire when combined is ether, which is actually the soul of the principle. So that's how right. that all correlates. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because that, that's the whole plot of the plot of the movie. He he supposed to right. he connect he with the he supposed to learn the different elements and connect with the the water nation. And while he's doing yeah. this, he's meditating and he's talking to the dragon spirit, which I'm assuming is the kundalini. Mm-hmm. Kundalini, exactly. That's exactly right. Okay, okay. Right. Now I got another question too. Um, Right. Yeah, I right. just said that by the um, I'm saying that he's the avatar, meaning that he's the master of spirit. He's the master of spirit. Right. Right. And in the end of the movie, mm-hmm. everybody bowed down to him because he's the avatar. Right. Okay. Now, I got another question. I've been reading this book. You ever heard of this book called uh, Rama, by Rama Prasad, called Nature's Finest Forces? Right. Mm-hmm. No. Okay, now he go, right. uh, he goes in about the he goes in about the Akasha. Now he he's explaining how the Akasha is like useless on the Earth plane. Could you go in to tell me like I mean what's the reason for that? Um, actually, he's not correct in that sense. When one practices okay. or Tai Chi or Reiki or pranic healing, they're doing con- they are actually moving consciously <laughs> through the space and the people in them. Um. Which is astral energy. Um, astral energy is feeding you. And people form these particular mutras, kakaos, um, or etc. You know, you're being fed by particular um, cosmic forces. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, because I was wondering, you so, know, because uh, cause what I. Mm-hmm. Sorry about that. Go ahead. No, so actually, you know, um, I, I know what he's saying, that if you don't know how to use it consciously, then it is useless because um, you have no consciousness about it, so therefore it, um, you need some type of conscious effort in order to um, utilize it. That's where the science of magic or the um, science of mind comes in at, is when you know consciously that there's energy or ether around you that you can move and um, utilize. Okay, okay. He also goes in about the um about the about different times of the day. Uh if you breathe, you know, uh, a certain way, certain things will take place. Like if you breathe in um incorrectly unbalanced, like from the left and it's it's not balanced with the night, something like that. Right. Right, right. Well, I I break that down in my out of the womb into the mind book where we definitely speak about that is that in order to master, you had to synergize both hemispheres of the brain, and you do that by your nostrils, your left and your right nostrils, and bring them into balance. That shows synergy within both hemispheres of the brain. If one is more clogged up than the other throughout the day, um, then that means that you are dominant with that particular nostril clogged. For example, um, let's say if you wake up around 3 to 5 o'clock every morning, you know, um, in the AM, that means that you're having a lung problem, and 
based on whichever nostril is clogged up, usually the four. Um, then what you have to do is begin to start doing some breathing exercise between the hours of three and five, in which that will help with um, the synergy of that. You can do that through the all and nostril breath technique, in which that you could breathe in for a count of four, hold it for 16, and then breathe out for a count of eight and alternate back and forth between the nostrils in order to synergize um, those hemi- the hemispheres of the brain and also clean- cleanse out the mucus in the lungs you know, and re-energize the body. So um, you definitely have to master that because based on whatever problem is going on in the body, um, you can definitely tell that by um, the difference in the breath, you know, based on the clogging of the nostril. Left nostril symbolizes um, the left um, eater, which is called um, the sacral nerve. And then the right nostril symbolizes the pangala, which is the right nostril. And both of those are symbolic to um, the Jesus story of Jesus being um, the shushuna, which is the little pillar. And him being between the two male factors, the two thieves, the one on the left said, if you be the Christ, we'll get just down from here, which is symbolic to the eater. And the one on the right said, um, remember me this day in paradise, you know, so... That is where those concepts come from, is right there within that depiction of the, um, of the imagery um, in the Bible itself. It's told um, in the Sanskrit innovative text um, from the Masters about how to bring those two opposites together. That's the same as the red and the blue crown on the ancient Egyptian of Lower Egypt and Upper Egypt, which is the model to the lower self and the higher self. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, one more question now. And uh, if you go back to the glossary of this book, it says uh, the K is the symbol for one of the nadis proceeding from the heart. Now, is this why um, the K is special? You know, like you look around the different corporations, the K is special. You got special 38. And, uh, you know, is that why? Right. 11, you know. I mean, right. Well, well, right. Well, if you count eight, is what number in the alphabet? Eight, eight is die. Right, I'm talking about K, right? K, K, well, well, K, 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 is, K is 11. K is 11. Right, right, right. So 11 means master builder. Okay. If you, if you look at numerology, you would see um, the number, the number 11 to me, master builder. Someone who is very psychic, you know. So okay. that's the reason okay. for the number 11. That is why it's special because it symbolizes someone who is able not just to build on the earthly plane as a mason, but also Freemason, which means also the ability you know, to build on the spiritual plane. Okay, okay. And, and is that similar to the uh, to the Kabbalah with the, with the sun, the intelligence of the sun being 111? Right, exactly. Okay, okay. All right, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. No problem. All right, we got 10 more minutes left. Um, any closing remarks? God is abundant. Yeah, I was thinking just from some of, you know, the other callers that, um, you know, a lot of our problems would would end if we just really get organized. We're not organized. We got this um, capitalist mentality, even though we in the conscious community. We have to get rid of that. We can't be working for these people. We can't... Uh, we can't act like um, it's cool to be accredited by any of their institutions. We can't uh, come into trying to liberate ourselves with any of their ideas. Like, we have to really take into consideration everything that you're talking about on your show and how serious it is. Like, when we talk about the metaphysics, like, it don't have to be no far-reaching reality. Like, it's really real. We just have to really know who we are. We have to believe that everything that we have is within us, and we got to go deeper in ourselves to find our authentic selves so that we can find our authentic solution. We can't be in bed with these other people. We can't be in bed with, that, with these other entities that are not us. And so we're going to have to get organized as a people, and that's pretty much my final words. Okay, okay. Brother L, you got any closing remarks? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, 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 Dr. Alim, uh, yeah, uh, she's right. We can't be in bed with uh, people that do not have our best of interests at heart because uh, they can't. 
because their culture and their nature won't let them, uh, for one. And also, uh, I always enjoy being on your show and listen to sisters like uh, Sister Inky here. And uh, I, I got a, quite Abundant. a bit of it. <laughs> huh? Mm-hmm. I'm abundant. Abundant sound. Yeah, I, 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 if a person want to call themselves black, I, I have no problem with that. As long as you don't try to push it on me. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know. Uh, other things that I'm, well, I, I well, say I'm looking. Well, what you're saying is that a proper noun is the name of a person, place, thing, or title. And that uh-huh. a proper adjective is a proper noun or a word derived from a proper noun. So that's what mm-hmm. she was saying. And um, mm-hmm. definitely um, look that look that up, brother L, and um, um, that alone will probably you know, like she said, that clears out a whole lot of information for people. If they start doing the research. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, like I said, I'm always uh, uh, getting uh, learning some new information on this show, and uh, that's why I always stay on this show. You know, I I never try to miss this show. You know. <laughs> Right, it's almost right. like a high to me, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, uh, looking forward to, 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 uh, to us talking on the next show next week. All right. Well, I'm everybody, looking, I'm looking forward to you coming back, back, sister. Thank you. Uh-huh. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Well, also, Sister Bundes, tell them your um, time for your, your show and everything. You know, um, tell the audience, you know, if we can get that out. And also, tell us once again about Bob. The Breath and the Air magazine that will be out January. Um, there's already some preliminary copies of which that some of um, my other guys got from last week. So, um, you know, tell, tell them more on that right there. Okay, you can um, listen. You can find me at AbundanceChild.com or on the same network, BlogTalkRadio.com slash AbundanceChild. Please listen to me any Thursday night between 8 and 11 p.m. Of course, my episodes are on demand. This week we have Lord Abba, and we are talking about the Moorish American Party. And is this really a solution for our people? And how, uh, what's going on with it, how it's being organized, and how you can help if you want to. Um, Breathe Air, breatheair.net, B-R-E-A-T-H-E-A-I-R.net. It is an Amber Institute Revolution publication uh, via the Amber Institute. Um, so you can look out for that. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. So, um, yeah, just, you know, look for us on, on those social networks. Also, you can find us on YouTube. That's where you're going to see the coverage. Like when we go out and we go to these events for the sister that was like, how relevant is a print magazine? She's absolutely right. So, mm-hmm. you know, we're not dumb. We, you can find us on Facebook updating stuff. You can find us on the Abundance Network because Minister Inky does a show on the Abundance Network, you know, most high willing. He'll still be doing that. And um, also um, my network, you know, so we're all partners in all of this. So, all right. yeah, that's how you can find us. The, 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 is it just on the YouTube, or do it have a telephone number the mm. same? No telephone number, but the YouTube is Breathe Air, B, uh, B-R-E-A-T-H-E-A-I-R, Couture, C-O-U-T-U-R-E. Same thing with the um, the Instagram. Okay. Same thing with the Facebook. We have a group. Um, so people can join that group if they're interested in submitting publications and things like that. We really want people to get in on the ground floor so that we own this magazine. We take ownership in in how it actually comes out. So, right. um, you know, we really do need the people's assistance because we do think that this is a good unifying factor. You know, we get in debates and all types of arguments and stuff on Facebook, and we, we're using other people's platforms to, to go against each other on YouTube. That's not going to happen in Breathe Air. Okay. Okay. Exactly, because that gotcha. type of mentality is linear. 
So, yeah, the magazine, obviously, is going from a holistic perspective, and that's where we need to keep it at. And, um, no doubt about it. We appreciate you, Sister Abundance Child, coming to Goddess. And, of course, you know, we be on your show whenever you need for us to be, so just keep us in mind. So, L, appreciate you coming on um, another time here. And I think we got, um, no, okay, they, they bounced out the room. I thought there was another call, but they bounced. All right, um, all right I'm going to go on close on down. First world order radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in levels in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Burn. Proceeding levels in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Burn. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. Burn. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Burn. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intention is straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories, shit that works. <laughs>